G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at a fairly long requested plane, the AJ-37. Now this plane is a very good plane because of one simple thing and that is the secondary weapons presets. You can basically optimize this plane to be the perfect counter to the A-10 and the SQ-25. Like, literally the perfect counter, and it also works for A5Cs too. So, this and the F8U Crusader are the perfect anti premium removal tools at your disposal, and by quite a long shot. The Vigan, we're going to call it, the AJ37, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to refer to it as the Vigan, because it is the Vigan from Wish. But this particular Vigan has the same sort of performance statistics more or less, as its big brother at 11.0. Now, this plane, like I've, I've recently reviewed the 11.01, uh, and it's perfectly fine. It's very good, its performance is excellent, uh, but of course, it gets a wide weapon selection. And as you can see here, we have changed our presets. Now, I'll put a, a picture of that up on screen for you, and you'll see that I've basically given myself one gun, and I've given myself a flare pod, and I've given myself two AIM-9 P3s. Look, for the purpose of this video, RB24Js, we're going to call them AIM-9Js because they function exactly the same way. I understand that they are an AIM-9P3 that has been exported. I don't want to see that in the comment section anymore, but I know. I'm just going to call them 9Js for ease of use. But we're on a particularly unfavorable map. Now, this map is the Grand Canyon one. I've since put it in my ban list because it is just huge. And of course, one thing that the Vigan does is it sucks fuel like you wouldn't believe. So I'm not even using the afterburner here. I'm just cruising around at 100% throttle. And that's just absolutely ridiculous. I can't stand this map. I can't stand the large maps. I think that they are a waste of time. I think that they're a waste of effort. And all you do is sort of look around and then all of a sudden, all the enemies are all there at one point. It doesn't actually fix the problem of a potentially cramped map. What it is, is it's just spreading the engagements in different little pockets. So you still get that really cramped engagement, but you just have less fuel to deal with it. Now, we're going to skip ahead because it does get extremely boring. So we're basically going to push ahead. I'm at almost 6,000 meters. I've got the afterburner running now because we're just about to engage in some combat and I want some energy. And of course, you can see this thing essentially does perform like the big boy Vigan. It's chasing the F-100, that little MiG-21, and so we're going to go after him. We're going to switch that uh, afterburner off just to get ourselves a little bit more, uh, a less likelihood of, of uh, crashing into the ground and embarrassing ourselves. And at a uh, little 1.1 kilometers, we send our missile away and it does indeed save the F-100, which is excellent news for us. But, you know, we haven't even got time to rest on our laurels because at this time, the enemies are just trickling in. And this is the problem. If you tend to spot your first enemy, everyone will sort of generally congregate in, congregate in that area. And unfortunately for this enemy team, all of their sort of teammates have decided to go and sort of trickle in one by one. We've got the F5 coming in. We've got that uh, MiG-21 coming in. And of course, we've got plenty of teammates all around together. We've just happened to stick in the pack. And more often than not, you'll find that these enemy teams or hell, even your teams, will tend to do the same thing. They'll just sort of get caught and uh, lost in the source. Now, I'm going to go for this MiG-21S here. He is just getting out of my way just in time. And another enemy in F-104 comes in. And this is what I don't really like about these maps. You tend to either have no one or everyone all at the same time. Now, I have not used my flares for this particular one. Maybe I used one flare, uh, but this is because I know that it is an F5C, and I'm going to engage in a dogfight here. I'm pretty confident against the F5. I know that the F5 will overshoot because it's got that better energy retention, and of course I switch my afterburner off, which means I'm going to bleed a lot of speed. Those Delta Wing aircraft do bleed speed in turns like you wouldn't believe, so you've got to keep the power on unless you want to purposely force an overshoot like this. Now I'm just going for little taps of the, of the uh, gun here. I only have one gun and I've used 30 rounds of ammunition, so I've got to be very frugal with what I use. I'm going to go straight down get myself some speed to try and get out of the way of that F-100D. And of course, the F-104 is coming in behind me. I know that if the F-100 was to engage me, I would have the A-10 behind me. But of course, the A-10 takes the head-on kill and does that so beautifully. So we're going to go here for a little bit of a quick missile. Hopefully, it strikes the F-104A. He doesn't really have a chance anyway. I could potentially run him down, but I set him on fire. 
regardless. So that's a very, very easy kill there. And uh, if it wasn't going to be me, it was going to be the A10 with the 9Ls. So we're going to cut forward a little bit here. And A10A decides to join the fray after about five minutes. Uh, and that's the problem. You tend to leave your slower opponents out. Notice the ones that came in quickly. Uh, the MiG-21s, the F5s, the F100s, the F104. Uh, but unfortunately for the AV-8, he's kind of left out there. And uh, I've gotten my guns switched around on the wrong side. I, I thought it was on the other side. It was on the right-hand side instead. And so I've aimed it com completely incorrectly. Especially when you're super close up. You've got to be really careful with the way you aim these guns. Otherwise, you're pretty much guaranteed to miss. And when you've only got 150 rounds, you really do need to be careful. So we're going to try and be careful again. Go in a little bit closer. And I've managed to, again, bungle the shot. We're going to go around. But it's okay because this plane is very, very maneuverable. You can just see how easily I'm able to turn and burn with this AV-8. And it's only a matter of time before I manage to stick one or two rounds into the wings of the AV-8. And it is probably going to be this one. There we go. Beautiful shot there, finally working out. But again, look how much speed I've bled. If this was a 1v1, or if I was confident it was a 1v1, I would have engaged and then uh, left with zero speed just for someone else to come in and steal me really quickly. So I'm just, you know, keeping my head on a swivel, making sure my teammates are around nice and close. And I'm going to get in nice and, nice and cozy with this SU-25. Going to go for a quick shot there, but no dice. I'm very confident that the SU-25 has used all of his missiles because otherwise that uh, friendly plane around me would have been dead. So we're going to go over and we have now energy trapped the SU-25. He's no, in no way able to escape. But I only have 25 rounds of ammunition left. And the SU-25 is a tanky little beast. So I have to be careful again with my uh, shot placement. This is one of the very rare planes in War Thunder that actually requires a decent amount of skill to use. And of course, I don't say that being sort of lighthearted or whimsical or whatever. Um, I genuinely think that this plane takes a fair amount of, uh, of, of, of sort of aim and, and knowledge. And it also does give you that, that, that uh, liberty to play around and dogfight and whatnot. Uh, and in this case, we're going to do it with an Ariete. I, oh God, I just feel so bad because this plane is not deserving of being in this matchmaker. Not with 10.3s like this, uh, but I certainly think that uh, the Ariete is, is now going to be very, very sad. Without, without a wing, I don't know what you do. But of course, this is about sort of 15 minutes between engagements we're looking at, or, or 10 minutes between engagements. Uh, so this map is excessively boring. I was about to J out of this, to be honest. But last of all, we spotted the SU-7, who, when I activated the order, was like 40 or 50 kilometers away. Imagine getting this in a subsonic jet. I would, I would just quit, to be honest. And in fact, even in supersonics, I don't even bother playing this map anymore. So I don't blame anyone for leaving. I seriously would do it myself. Uh, and again, we have this SU-7, last enemy left on the team, and I just can't get my shots on target. So I think I'm just going to let him feign a getaway and then and then just put a missile into him, unless he's just playing fun, playing funny for me. There we go. I managed to get a shot there. He does know me. Good on you, mate, for doing that, and uh, good on you for being a good sport and not running away or being a pain in the ass. So, you know, it's uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for that. But we are going to move on to the next match in a little bit. And this is going to be a little bit more short and sharp. And you might be thinking, well, this particular match, uh, it's against sort of 9.3s. Go on, show me a real match. Well, bloody hell, I am going to show you a real match. This is a, I believe this is a full up tier, or at least very close to a full up tier. There is an MLD uh, and there are MiG-27s and things like that in there. So we're going to be sort of up against the big boys here. And it's not going to be as hard as you might think because you've got the performance. And when you've got the performance, everything else can sometimes fall into place. Now, you're not going to be getting six kills a match or even four or five kills is going to be a very big stretch. But, you know, you can do two or three fairly consistently. And I think that that is good enough for this particular this particular plane, considering the lack of armament that it's got. You can do a fair amount of work. And again, that is just simply down to the airframe and the engine. So that is the flight performance. Now, I am going to come across here and I'm going to try and intercept any planes that might be a little bit slow, uh, perhaps any A-10s that might be in the area, um, anything that could particularly sort of uh, tickle my fancy here. We have got plenty of planes that are trailing behind us, but I am always, for some reason, the first on the block. 
false Doppler radar shows nothing within 10 kilometers. RWR is clear, so I'm just going to go in and uh, waltz around and see what I find. This particular plane is not really meant to be the one that does this sort of thing. You should probably be a support fighter, but at the end of the day, whatever works, works. And if you want to experiment, then I'm ex doing exactly that. It just so happened to work this once. So, you know, don't bet on it, but you never know. <laughs> also bet on it. <laughs> so we're going to go here for this SU-22. He's almost three kilometers out, but I'm pretty confident that we're going to get the kill there with that particular missile. M9J is very, very strong missiles indeed. I'm going to go up and around and hopefully get my hands on something, but I've noticed this MiG-21 coming in. I'm going to wait for him to fire a missile, but he doesn't. or oh, he does, but it's too late. And I just roll over, anticipating the dogfight. He's picked up a lot of speed in the dive, and if he wants to come back up, he's going to go into my guns, and if he wants to go back down, he's essentially going to waste his position and it leaves it very, very open for a very tasty RB-24J. MiG-23 over here, dogfighting with the F5 and the MiG-27 there. I'm going to go for the quick shot here on the MiG-23. It looks like he's put himself into a beautiful spot, and the guns just magically converge. I just love it when it does that. So, MiG-27 coming down, looking super tasty as well. Maybe I can get my hands on some juicy MiG-27, but there is an F5 looking straight at me. This is a particularly hairy situation because the F5, if he is paying attention, will turn me into a walking repair cost. So, we're going to be super careful. MiG-23 MLD also has plenty of capabilities, but it looks like he's not going to focus on me immediately and the MLA then turns away. If you are in a situation where you're not fighting F-14s, uh, this plane is a great dogfighter. When you are facing F-14s, I would highly recommend that you try and stay away from them and uh, engage them when they're not looking, because that's the kind of luck that I've had with this plane. Or alternatively, try and get yourself on a team with the F-14s, but that's really not going to happen because now they're on both sides. It's, uh, it's kind of rough. But you know what? You can still make it work, um, and I've been doing that with a lot of the 10.3 sort of uh, so sort of support fighters or the the sort of 11.0 support fighters they've all been sort of putting in some good work at these tiers um, and I've noticed that a lot of them are fairly capable provided that you have either performance or missiles you can do at least something now this MLA is coming in looking pretty thick but unfortunately the guns do not converge and the MiG 27k takes out the F5 this leaves me a little bit sort of uh, in, in a bit of a shit situation so I'm gonna get some distance Hopefully go and uh, help out this F8U2, who is also in a little bit of a pickle. He's chasing the F5E. I don't manage to converge any shots on him, but now I'm going to go for either the MLD or the MLA, rather, and the MiG-27. The F8U finally puts the F5 down. I'm going to go for a quick head on here with the MLA. Again, no dice because of a bit of a poor shot, and the MiG-27K lines up perfectly. We're going to go for a quick shot here, and I miss one, miss two, miss three, and on the fourth time, we are probably going to get ourselves a nice little critical hit. It kind of looks like he's missing a tail, uh, but I'm going to let it burn for a little bit and then uh, wait for him to just sort of fall out of the sky, which looks like it is exactly what is going to happen. The MLA looks pretty good too, but he's just out of my reach of my guns. And uh, the F8U is going to try and clean up my kill, which is very annoying. But regardless, it is all going to go fairly well. Now it's a 2v1. The F8U is in a low sort of uh, altitude turning engagement. The MLA is in front of my guns. I'm about to blow away all of my uh, extra guns, but you know what? It doesn't really matter because we've pretty much got this in the bag. I can do whatever the hell I want. And that's the beauty of the Actvigan. It's only really a matter of time until the MLA finally succumbs to the might of the AJ-37 and the F8U-2. This plane is perfectly capable. The F8U2 is also perfectly capable, and of course the MLA is locked in a turning engagement. I did want to try and get some separation here, uh, but it looks like the F8U2 has gotten the same idea, and the uh, MLA and the F8U have converged at first. So there's a really nice, easy, good stream of a match. It just sort of flowed super well, and I got a little bit lucky, but you will find that even against sort of full F14 teams, you'll end up with a fairly sort of decent slew of matches, provided that you don't go in too aggressively, because at the moment the uh, M54 meta is real, it is very frustrating, but that's beside the point. The SU-7 here, on the next game here, we are going to be basically be sort of taking out the trash. There's a premium plane there, there's another premium plane there. I actually don't think I kill a regular tech tree plane at all. 
I think they're all premiums in this match. So, again, taking out the trash, round two. This is exactly what you come to the channel for, right? Again, the A5 is looking like he's sort of just paid attention to me. I'm going to go for a quick convergence shot, but unfortunately we get no dice there. And it looks like the A5 is sort of looking for a bit of a dogfight. But luckily for me, I'm in the Akfigan, which is just able to do whatever the hell you want. I'm going to see if I can make the gun converge in this shot here. Oh, what a beautiful shot. And we move right on to the next one. We're going to start again looking out for more premiums to slaughter. And there is an SU-25 at that lower altitude. I'm going to let one flare go uh, while turning off the afterburner. And that should be enough to distract the R60M. So we are going to converge down on the SU-25. It looks like he's run out of skill and run out of energy. So we're just going to put some rounds into his face and hope that he likes it. And if he doesn't, well, that's okay because we get silver lines and uh, he gets a repair cost so too bad for him moving on we are looking again for a new target and there's another su-25 looking beautiful and tasty so good and so tasty going for a head on there another critical hit we are just pretty much taking out all the uh, premium andes over here going in a vertical and we are pretty much going to energy trap the su-25k without as much of a sweat this is just so good to do this, and it is so refreshing. So if you are looking for something to take out these absolute premium scumbags, then uh, go for it. If you're tired of someone trying to, you know, dominate you with those all-aspect missiles, well, I've kind of found your guy. This is the one pest control remover in the Swedish tree to absolutely do the job flawlessly every single time. This plane is just an absolute joy. And now we're going to go and find our very last premium guy. It is an SU-25K at about 8,000 meters. Yeah, it happens. But I suppose this plane is more than capable of dealing with it. And uh, give it a second and we're going to cut to that exactly now. We're uh, up at 7,000 meters. He's there. I think his mum's told him to go and do the dishes or face the, uh, the dreaded sandal to the face. And so he has chosen one death over the other. And uh, that death is by A9J. We have ourselves here a beautiful little victory in the uh, in this beautiful, beautiful missile, raining some beautiful justice. Um, and that's pretty much all the, the kills that I get for that match. And that'll do us for today. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you would like to play this plane, or if you would like to, uh, you know, come and join the Discord. We'll have a chat about this plane or in the comments section below. Uh, and if you would like to support the channel, then, of course, down in the link in the description below, there are, well, there are plenty of them. So you can support the channel in any way you'd like. But of course, just leaving a like and interacting for the algorithm is plenty for me. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. I sincerely appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.